Fox is one of the coolest channels on YouTube and in their latest video they used this animation and that's what we're going to create today. A circle animation in a minimalistic style. Fox uses a lot of these cool animations and I'm planning to dive deeper into all these videos. If you want to download this project file for a small fee to support the channel you can do so in the description down below and also if you want the free assets you can check the description. Now let's jump into After Effects. So like always, let's go through the animation. First, we'll see these circles pop up on a grid background. And then we see this text come up with a typewriter effect. And now what's interesting is that the text later on fades out and these other balls will move down. And then you'll see this other text come up and also move up and the other text will replace it. Now, of course, I will go through everything, but first we're gonna set up the whole scene. So let's start creating this really cool grid. Now, a basic grid is really easy to create. You can even just go to the effects and presets and generate a grid. But in this case, we also want these pluses on certain effects. So when we go back to our inspiration, you also see that basically there's a square and then there's a plus on some points. There are multiple ways to do this, but in this case, I'm just gonna use a repeater on a shape. So first, make sure your fill is off and the stroke is set to solid and the stroke color is in this case white. Then the stroke, I think five pixels should be enough, actually maybe a bit too much. Just make sure you hold shift, maybe change the stroke to three so it's really thin like this. And then we're just gonna duplicate the rectangle and then we'll move it by holding shift so it will stay on the same axis. You can now select both rectangles, press command D on Mac or control D on Windows to duplicate it and then move this over and then hold shift again, something like this. And then one last time, select them all. Again, duplicate them, move them down like this, then get your pen tool out. And what we'll do is we'll go to this edge, select our shape layer, change the stroke to maybe four or five, click here, hold shift. So you have a straight line like this and make sure that nothing is selected. And we'll do this again by going into the middle, holding shift and going to the right like this. So we have a plus. And now what's important is select both these shapes and make this stroke a bit bigger, maybe four. And you can even move it around if you want to, to basically align it perfectly, making sure that it's how you want it. Now maybe decrease the size of this so we can see it a bit better. And what we'll do now is we go to add and then repeater. Now go into the repeater and make sure you go into transform and that they align well. So something like this. Let's deselect everything, see how it looks. This looks really good. Now increase the amount of copies to maybe six. This is great. Now we want another repeater for the other axis. So we just go to add repeater, go into that transform, and then make sure that the position on the first axis is zero. And then the second axis will just move it down and you'll see what happens when we align it perfectly. Let's zoom in for this so we can really dial it in. Bloop, there we go. Now, if you want to adjust some things like the plus, maybe you, you want to increase the stroke of that plus. So you can select the shapes and maybe make that strokes to six. So basically it's more visible. Now, of course, we can just select the whole shape layer, press T for the opacity and decrease the opacity. Now let's open it again, go into our repeater, and I just want to have the copy set to six. And the beautiful thing with this is that you can adjust it to your own liking. If you don't like something, you can adjust the plus, you can make it custom. And this is also why I'm explaining it in this way, because you can do everything with this. You can get really creative, and we can even use this effect later on with the circles. Speaking of, I'm gonna create those circles with the same effect. Although they're really similar, there's one small thing, and that's when we look at the Fox animation, you'll see that the top layer, you'll see that the top layer will split up. So we need to make sure that we have a top layer and then a bottom layer that basically moves. But this is really easy to do, guys. We'll just put our shape layer back on. Actually, to make things more clear, I'm gonna turn it off for now. Make sure you have the circle selected and make sure the fill is on this time to white and the stroke is of course off. Then just hold shift to create a small little circle like this. And for the first row, we can literally just go to add, we'll press repeater again, and we can just increase the copies to maybe uh, something like 10 or 
18 in this case. Let's press P to position it a bit to make sure that it's aligned, move it down. And then we go to add again and we go to repeater again. This time we go to transform repeater position zero and we move it down. We'll add a bit more copies, something like five. And then I will show you this really neat trick. We duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D on Windows or Command D on Mac. We open this layer, we'll open the contents. I'm gonna delete the second repeater. And I'm going to turn off the bottom layer to just show what's happening here. So this is going to be top layer and this is going to be bottom layer. Now let's say we turn these both on and I'm going to animate the top layer. There's an issue because what we see is that the top layer is also in the other layer. And there's a simple trick to get around this. You see this offset, you put this on one. And what this does, it exactly moves this over one layer. So what happens now is you have the top layer and you have the bottom layer. If you want to have more space between it, you can also press two and it will keep open exactly one row of circles. You can, you can even animate with this. I wouldn't suggest that. I would just use this for offsetting it. If you do want to animate, you can always press P for position and of course animate this down. Now what's also really cool is that we can now adjust the opacity of the bottom one and lower it. Now again, if we go back to our inspiration, you see that the balls are a bit smaller and there's a bit more. Other than that, it's quite simple. It animates down and then fades out. Speaking of animation, let's go to the next step and we'll animate everything. So the background layer isn't actually animating, but what is cool is that because we created this in After Effects, we can do whatever we want with this. We can even make this 3D, we can scale it and it will stay really sharp as you can see. So if you want to animate this grid, you can and use your creativity. Now let's animate these circles. It's quite simple. We just press P for position, set a keyframe, go a bit further, move them down. Of course, select all the keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease, go to the graph editor and then we'll make them a bit more smooth. I always like this because it's just, it's just always a bit more smooth. As you can see, it looks so delicious. We can even go to toggle switches and add motion blur to it. And then we press T for transparency, select the stopwatch, press U to see all keyframes. I'm gonna move this over and of course, I'm gonna set a keyframe here. Now, what's important is that the next keyframe is a bit lower, but not completely off. Uh, maybe uh, something like 50%, 40%, whatever you like. Let's see what this does. Looks great. I can even easy ease these opacity values so it goes a bit more smooth. Looks great. For the text animation, it's really simple. We can just use built in text presets. So let's say we put politics here. I'm gonna make sure that it's aligned in the center. I also see that our circles are not perfectly in the center. We can fix that later on. You can also select the position, make sure that you are on a keyframe and that everything is selected. And then we can move this over to the right. We can even use our grid a bit to align it. Then of course, select the position and copy the keyframe over to the top layer. So those are aligned well. I'm happy with this. And again, going back to our text layer, to animate this, we just go to our effects and grids and use the typewriter effect. You press U to see the keyframes because maybe this goes a bit too slow. We can increase the speed of this and then we preview it. And as you can see, it's a really beautiful animation. Now the second animation I think is really cool where the words basically replace themselves. Now there's a couple ways to do this. It depends a bit on which After Effects you're using. If you're using the latest one, it's really easy, but I know that not everyone is on the latest version. So I will show you the method that works for everyone. I'm just gonna turn this off for now. And I'm gonna go to the text tool and I'm gonna type text one, enter, enter, next line, next line, text two. Now to make it even clearer, I'm gonna turn the circles off for now so you can see what's happening. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask in a new layer. So make sure that nothing is selected and that the fill is on, stroke is off, color doesn't matter because you will hide it anyway later on. Just make sure that it's the same height as the text. I'm gonna move this up by pressing V to select it. Maybe something like this. I'm gonna select the text and I'm gonna go to the type tool and make sure that the distance between them is a bit lower. It doesn't have to be that much. Now we go to the toggle switches. I'm gonna use it, this as a mat, the shape layer. I'm gonna press P for position, select the stopwatch, go a bit further and 
move it up to the middle, something like this. We'll copy this keyframe over, so it will stay a bit like that. I'm also gonna make this quicker, use the easy ease, go into our graph editor, make sure that it ramps down a bit. Let's preview this, looks cool. I'll add a motion blur by toggling this switch. Again, I'll copy over this keyframe and then I'll go a bit further, maybe a couple seconds over, and then you think, but where's the other text? Well, we can just go a bit further and then move it up, Floop. there we go. And of course we can adjust the speed a bit, but it's exactly the same effect. And I think this is a really cool text effect that you can use more often anyway. Now I adjusted the keyframes a bit, and as you can see, it looks really smooth. And if you put everything together, you'll get something like this. I'm so happy with all the feedback that I'm getting and also the growth that this channel has. Keep subscribing because it's going really well. It makes me so happy to create these videos. I really enjoy creating them. And I also really enjoy seeing all your comments come in. Our Discord community is also growing like crazy which is also cool to see guys let me know which effect you want to see next in the comments down below and then i'll see you next time bye